What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 22 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Ever Chosen campaign. So as we saw last time, Archeon has finally completed the last of his quests. The six treasures of chaos are the ever chosens, and he has begun on the long road back to return to the Empire. It'll be a nice little homecoming for, I guess, Archeon and, <laughs> and nobody else. Anyway, he is going to uh, probably move through Jarnagrun to get there, but uh, oh well. Uh, we'll have some fun enemy fights on the way, and more likely than not will be fighting the Empire of Undeath more than the Empire of Karl Franz, but that's the way I like it anyway. Uh, in fact, the other than our own faction at the current time, uh, the top three strongest factions are Vlad, Khemri, and I believe it was the uh, Exiles of Nehek as well. So two Tomb Kings, one Vampire Counts, all dead. Which again, I have to appreciate. Uh, anyway, in terms of what we got to do uh, this time around, we actually ended last episode off with several battles uh, that we're about to engage in. Siggy is going to attack Malekith right here, and I believe there were a few others, but uh, that's the most important one. We gotta move everybody around and uh, find more fights for the rest of our lords. Ah, yes, we also have Village's debut today against all of the dead here. Looks like it'll be about three stacks that they'll be facing off against, but fortunately I would think that the... Uh, I would think that the Hell Cannons should be pretty adept at dealing with all that. And if they aren't, well, Village, <laughs> it'll be a do-or-die moment for you. Anyway, uh, let's get started on all this, shall we? Archie, you've got a ways to go, and you're going to move all the way up to Jarnagrun. They won't like the trespass, but, well, it's not like we can not trespass when we attack them. And I don't believe we have any... Okay, yeah, good. I just had to check whether we had a uh, alliance with them of any kind. Zazel, you are headed to the Altar of Ultimate Darkness. In fact, there's two things we want to do here. Uh, first of all, you're going to knock out Mr. Vegmorla's Poison Blade. Well, a quick little auto-resolve like so. Hopefully that didn't hurt too much. And, okay, it hurt the Thunder Freaks a little bit. And then we're going to take the money, and then we will take the Altar of Ultimate Darkness as well. For Ooh, free student. That's... Uh, that's very nice and dauntless for Azazel as well. And on any demonic entity, the uh, leadership is nice because we obviously don't want him melting away. Altar of Ultimate Darkness, you're up next. And medium casualties means we're going to take a little bit of hurt here. And I guess we can sack it. Hopefully we can take it after sacking it, but I guess we're about to find out. And indeed we can. And hey, a free banner of swiftness. I won't say no to that either. Occupy. And just to double check what we have here, Mr. Venerous Soul Shredder, are you a Chaos Strategist? Yes, indeed you are. I just had to check that we had the additional uh, uh, the additional healing, because everybody needs it, apparently. Now, Dracula Spire and Eldar Spire are a little bit far, so here's how we're going to do this. Azazel will move down through Rakdo Gorge and Temple of Cain to meet up with Siggy, because they have to trade units. Instead, what we'll do is we'll summon a new lord, say you. Demahar Crow Brother. And we're going to get him to recruit some units, both from the Altar of Ultimate Darkness and from Iron Frost. He's going to grab these two locations and then actually start moving back up north, where he'll trade his troops to Valkia, who's going to be on the field in a few turns as well. So that way her army will be partially ready as well for her to move to the Palace of Ruin and Kawark, and for us to uh, hopefully attack Belakor. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of moving parts to it. Anyway, Siggy, I do believe you are not up next. Galator is up next. All right. And now, as for Galator, I was wondering whether we should attack Kislev last time around, and I think that actually what we will do is not attack Kislev quite yet. I think we'll give them one more chance to retake Prague because of two reasons. First of all, we can easily peace out with them, and second of all, next turn, we're going to want to break the defensive alliance with Throg. We want him weaker, and perhaps if he loses his armies or further armies and the defensive agreement with us, he'll be vassalizable rather than uh, what we're still doing. Plus, I really want him to lose Prague. Not to worry, Gulator will return to Kisuf, and for now, I'm sure he'll have a little bit of fun in dealing with Azag the Slaughterer, who we are... We 
have no choice in getting into war with anyway, as in 13 turns the endgame scenario will activate. And though that isn't really the main focus of this particular campaign. As for the focus of this campaign, while we're at it, wait a second, uh, you move into Beckhofen. Yeah, move into Beckhofen. And just because it'll be worth more in terms of uh, raiding it than Zavastra will be. And I sincerely doubt that Vlad will suddenly attack us. Anyway, as for the goal of this campaign, since we are, well, some way through it, kind of hard to say how far we are through it, uh, that remains to be seen. Obviously, we want to complete all of our objectives, but aside from that, if interest does remain, if the engagement is up there, I am willing to do a full conquest campaign, as in take everything all over the map and destroy everything, especially considering there's still a bunch of lore types that we have to try out. There's a bunch of uh, gifted units that we have to try out. There's a lot more fun to be had with the Warriors of Chaos. I think after my favorite vampire counts, I'm enjoying the Warriors of Chaos the most out of all the factions, just because of the sheer variety that their faction offers. So many legendary lords, so many regular lords, so many units to play around with, and uh, various other types of factions whose units mesh very well with theirs, whether it be the demonic factions, Chaos Dwarfs, and possibly Skaven, and Norska, etc. It's, uh, it's fun stuff. Uh, so do keep that in mind when dropping those likes and comments below which you did do which you did i guess keep in mind for this particular episode because we reached the goal and the hour long will be here and the effort does still stand 300 likes and 50 comments and let's hopefully beat lewin as you guys have been saying but uh, well it's a pretty big ask but we'll see anyway that's enough for me i think it's time to hit malekith where it hurts which is his face and siggy you are going to get yet a few buffs now i think we were going with born to serve because it's a significant buff for all of the marauders 10 percent physical resistance for one point granted siggy might not keep the marauders in his army because even with all the buffs they're going to be vastly inferior to uh, knights of slanish and to uh, chosen and whatever other things we decide to keep in his army but it's still uh, and still something to look into right now uh we are the elite will give us more physical resistance Ah, fine, we'll go for We Are the Elite. It's not much, but keep stacking it. Huh? Wait, what? Did it just not update? I think maybe we have to move. Because I see the Marauders are at 10, but they should be at 12. Oh, no, they shouldn't. I lied. They, it has to be rank 7. So at least it applies to the Mirror Guard. Mm, no, it doesn't. Mirror Guard have zero physical resistance. Huh. Are they not counted as high ranks to this? Well, that's curious. Well, hopefully it works on something. We'll see about it uh, when these guys actually reach a high rank, but for now. And let's keep going. Edgelord Hudika, we're gonna get you Chaos Strategist, gotta get that extra unit experience gain, and the bonuses from post-battle loot. As for this stuff... Uh, the easy pick is going to be Ruinous Wrath for the magical ability, or for the magical damage. If nothing else, that uh, prevents us from needing to equip a weapon that specifically does magical damage, and which we gotta appreciate. Otherwise, it's an easy move into Blade Master. I don't find the raiding trees particularly useful, as even though you do tend to raid, you don't raid so much that it's uh, worth wasting points on them. Anyway, Siggy, time to hit Malekith, who has foolishly moved near you in March Stance and who should be giving us a pretty darn decent battle. This is his main stack. He has a ton of dual sword shades and by the looks of it. Or actually, no, these are the regular shades. But nonetheless, they should be pretty darn good in melee and in range against our regular marauders. Should be a disparity in unit quality, if nothing else, but, uh, well, I'm reasonably confident in us, especially considering the enemy is in march stance. Away we go. Caress. All right, here. 
<laughs> Here we go. I just, I just always laugh seeing Sigvald running at things. He, uh, he looks very funny when, <laughs> when we're running. And I assume we can get him even faster. He's at uh, speed 70, so he's not quite at the speed of a cavalry unit, but he can nearly catch up to Malekith on his chariot at least. So, hey, yeah, speaking of catching up to Malekith, that's where we're sending Sigvald to run down uh, the chariot while the rest of the army approaches the enemy and begins uh, the fight. It looks like the enemy doesn't even want to try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, it's gonna be a while before I get tired of this. I uh, really need some yakety sacks, though. Oh, once again, they really need to make it, uh, like, royalty-free, so you can just use it anywhere you want. Anyway, Siggy has caught up to Malekith. It looks like he's going to uh, call for some help in the form of some harpies and a master, but I don't think any of those are going to be too problematic. And for Siggy, we are moving the rest of the army in with all of the marauders and our demon that's uh, just booking it towards the enemy line. Not as fast as Siggy, perhaps, but fast enough to get into combat. We're going to make sure that our demon nets here target the black guard of nagaron specifically and the others go after some shades and try to knock out the uh, main threats on the field chill winds coming in from malekith as well they should got to be careful with chill winds getting the demon nets in particular but hopefully they can rip their way through the enemy fast enough so as to not allow the enemy to cast. Speaking of ripping through the enemy quickly, we use the sacrifice ability on one of our marauders, massively buffing up the melee attack of everybody nearby. 86 on those aspiring champions, and 76 on the mirror guard, for example. 73 on the exalted demonettes, and those black guard are going to have a Brit pretty darn bad day. Speaking of having a pretty bad day, Malekith down to lower than half HP. That chariot is not doing him any favors. Again, Siggy here. And it looks like we have summoned our Chaos Spawn to help us out, though Malekith will, alas, not be able to witness their chaotic glory as one more hit should bring him down. Okay, two more hits should bring him down. 444 HP. And, really? All right, I guess Sigi missed, but he didn't miss that one. <laughs> and Malekith rolls away. How's the rest of the battle going? Uh, looks like a plenty of the Shades are still fighting, but we have made it into the back lines with our Marauder Horsemen, who have pinned the units of Shades in place and allowed some Marauders to close with them. And while I'm sure the uh, Marauder Horses are fairly fragile and will have uh, uh, would normally suffer casualties to fighting the Shades, they do just outnumber the enemy with the uh, marauders helping out and just a matter of forcing all the shades into melee combat we also do manage to delete most of the enemy army before they get any use out of that uh, uh, out of that murderous prowess slash mastery the black guard of nagarond are pretty much done for and it's just a matter of running down those units that are still fighting yeah, that, uh, that march stance really didn't do Malekith any favors. I actually don't know why the AI decided to march stance so close to us. I think that because most of Sigvald's army is made out of marauders, the AI decided that, uh, well, this army is marauders, so it must be super weak, and therefore there isn't much uh, reason not to march stance nearby. Otherwise, Malekith could have just moved into regular stance right into Nagarond instead of past it. But anyway, I digress. With that, the battle ends, and while it says close victory, I really sincerely doubt that it was. Also, I guess this is likely to be the last battle for Sigvald's army in its current state, as we'll be switching the demonettes and uh, some of the units around to, uh, to Azazel soon, so time to switch things up. All right, very nice indeed. That was not problematic whatsoever. And uh, Malekith, unfortunately, on that chariot of his rather than on Seraphon was uh, really no issue to be dealt with. As for Siggy, who ripped him apart without a problem and badly damaged one of the enemy masters, I guess... Uh 
Uh, Sigwald may not be everybody's favorite uh, lord and uh, what not, but you can't say he can't stab face um, pretty darn decently, if nothing else. Sure, not to the extent of something of someone like Sigvald or uh, Torox, but uh, or not Sigvald, <laughs> Valkia or Torox, uh, but at the same time, considering he's spending about approximately 80% of his time in combat looking at himself, uh, <laughs> that's still pretty Pretty darn effective. Anyway, uh, let's see how we did here. Oh, I guess this army isn't really named. We're gonna need a lot of marauders, of, well not marauders, but the chosen of Slanish names of various types for this particular army since Sigvald buffs them. Uh, the... Okay, the Marigard did do, indeed do better than the Aspiring Champions, but not by as much as I would have thought, considering the disparity in numbers. The Exalted Demonets did well, especially since one of them spent the time hunting down the enemy Black Guard of Nagarond and absolutely ripped them apart, while the other one I went ahead and took care of some shades. Oh, worked well either way. Sacrifice those captives for a little bit more cash, and Malekith goes down. Very, very nice. Now, we can hit Nagaron, technically speaking, from where we are, but there is no real need. I guess we're going to have to go around and grab the Temple of Cain, head down to Hag Grief, and figure out how many more territories they have. And, hey, another student. Oh, right, it's because we don't have a, uh, we don't have a tech up right now. Which is great, gotta keep using that. And we got a Frenzy for defeating Malekith. I believe Sigvald doesn't have Frenzy normally, so this is actually a decent pickup for him. I'm actually surprised how few Cornate units have Frenzy, or how many Cornate Lords, or how few Cornate Lords have Frenzy as well. Anyway, Malekit doesn't look like he's wanting to become our vassal quite yet, but he'll learn. If nothing else, Nagarond Inc. is adaptable. Uh, let's see, let's take care of the rest of what we gotta do. Jaeger, you're moving out to the Great Arena. And occupying it, and hmm, wondering whether we should send somebody through the underway sea or underground sea lane through to the boiling sea. It ends up right here somewhere, doesn't it? Or wait, no, it ends up up here somewhere. Yeah, I'm just gonna click it now then. All right, underworld sea lane goes to. That's where I was. You just can't see the. Uh, you just can't see it. Okay, fine. Uh, that would be a little bit closer to the ancient city of Quintex. We do want to try to get to Morathi, though there's no guarantee that you'd be able to be confederate or not confederated, vassalized quick. Hmm. I'll think about it. We still have other things to do here, and we have to make an assault on both the Dark Elves and the High Elves at the same time, plus the third most powerful faction in the uh, in the game right now is, as I was saying, the Exiles of Nehek, surprisingly. They must have raised a ton of armies with their technologies. So we'll be fighting a lot of Tomb Kings, which we haven't done yet, but which I'm very much going to enjoy. Anyway, Kuhar, you sir. You have to do several things. Well, I guess the first thing that you can do is just move to the enemy's settlement. We are sadly going to get rid of this Chaos Armored Chaos Troll unit. Yes, it serves us well, but it's a little bit too slow, I think, for Kukar's army. I'll resolve this. And, oh wow, we got nice rewards for that. I don't know whether we can sack it, so I'm not going to risk it, because the ogres might steal it from us, and I'd rather that they not. Uh, another war banner and another student. And, is that two students? Mm. I mean, like, that's not something the Cornate guys will necessarily want to have, but, uh, Hex is the uncoordinated. How about you? Student. Ah, yes, we did get two. Swell. Swavely. Uh, where can we put you? Yo, Malefax Rune Smasher, the guy with all the best unit types for each of the uh, gods. We'll probably get a few gifted units in there. Uh, let's give your minion exalted here. Ooh, I love the asymmetry. Need more asymmetry in chaos designs, people. Way too much symmetry, uh, oftentimes. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to do was get rid of the ogres in place of getting another hell cannon. I want this army to be real quick moving. And be able to, well, you know, Bloodhunt army thematically. And also, I want the Gorby's Chariots of Corn in here as well. And just to try them out. And if we're going to go for Gorby's Chariots, we should do it uh, with Corn as well. Because we're going to have the Skull Crushers and Blood Crushers in another army. And Valkyrie will have a decent amount of them as well. And probably a couple of Bloodthirsters if we can fit them in there. Ah, oh, damn, I really liked the names of the. 
two bloodthirsters I had in the Valkia campaign, her two pet bloodthirsters, but I don't remember what they were. Well, now, I, okay, if nobody, if, any, if anybody remembers them, please let me know, because I really enjoy them. But if nobody remembers them, I will just look it up. Or just drop from the suggested names for bloodthirsters, because those seem to be fairly popular as well. Anyway, uh, what was I going to do? Delete the trolls. Are you out? And another cannon in. All right, very nice. Uh, very nice indeed, and we'll name you as well as a few other things here after. I'm just I'm not 100% sure what exactly this army's final form is going to look like, so I don't want to do that yet. Although, I will name you. Uh, okay, what was I going to do here? Okay, there is... Thurmond Bjornvak is... Oh, I can't fit that. Of course I can't. All right. I was originally going to put two Exalted Heroes of Corn in this army, but frankly... Why am I typing Thurman twice? Uh, Bjornvak. Uh, I was going to put two Heroes of Corn in this army. Uh, but we're having a difficult time getting enough Exalted Hero capacity to actually do this, since there doesn't seem to be any other way to acquire capacity than Dark Fortresses. We're already basically maxed out on Dark Fortresses. We're going to get one, two... Three, four more if we can get Prague. Maybe five if we can grab Krakadrak. Yes to Middenheim, but that one will be so late it'll probably not be of much use. So that's maxing out our Exalted Heroes, which means that we can basically have one per army. Now if you're wondering why we want one per army, it's mostly because they provide the extra experience to units as it takes a long time to train them up. So we do need one per army. Anyway, Valmir, you are good for now. Siggy, I almost forgot that you can still move. We could besiege Nagaron if we really wanted to. If they sally out, we'd get a nice fight out of them. Or we could raid this. How much would this how much would raiding this give us? Actually a fairly decent amount. Yeah, let's stay there. Although I guess one problem is that they could retake the chill road. I guess Jaeger, you're gonna have to stay here and bully these guys. <laughs> oh, actually, huh. I had another idea. We could actually besiege it with Sigvald, wait until they sally out, and then break the- Damn, yeah, I should have besieged them now. You can't reach them, can you? No, you can't move. Okay. Wait until they sally out, destroy the army there, then have Jaeger in a permanent sort of uh, siege on them without taking Nagron, because we want them to keep it for when we vassalize them. Even though Archaon really or not Archaon, uh, Malekith really doesn't like chaos. Look at that, minus 580. Ooh. Minus 580, plus minus 167, plus minus 143. I'm actually worried that it might not be possible to vassalize him. We might actually have to destroy him. Hmm. He might hate us so much that it'll never get positive enough to uh, make it worth our time. See, Malice reasonably liked us, and he's only at plus 124 and is dropping because of us having treaties with a bunch of factions that he has aversion to. And the same thing is true of Malagith, but like several times more. Maybe we have to destroy him. You guys let me know your thoughts on the matter. Once again, I did try to vassalize uh, one of the Cathan factions in another campaign, my village campaign, and they were like minus a thousand, and they just hated us so much uh, that they weren't really able to achieve anything with that in mind. But anyway, you're heading to Howling Rock, good sir. And chance you're gonna follow. Alright, stay here, village. Don't you worry. I guess we can get the banner Eternal Flame. I'll put it on you. Alright, then what we want to do is make sure that you guys get the mark of Zinch. We are going to go for speed... well, now. We'll start off as Marauders with Sword and Board just for the uh, shields, but then we'll switch to uh, Halberds afterwards. Because you want to be Halberd-tastic with uh, Zinch and upgrade you horses as well. Do we get any more units here? Ah, uh, damn, I was hoping for another uh, Marauder Horseman. I guess we can get another one of these. Alright, and then you can get Zinched up nicely as well. So, well, the swubbly continues. Uh, you, sir, are going to come in as a reinforcement. Uh, you're going to be our artillery army. Hmm, but we are running out of space for lots and lots of artillery. Well, artillery plus just general chaos. Uh, you also need a hero, which will put you up to 18. 19 if we get another iron demon in here. I... Would like some trains eventually. We don't technically need knights here. 
They were kind of there just because. Hmm. If you're wondering why I'm concerned with this right now, is I was thinking about getting the Soul of Damnation in here now. Lots of demon engines in a single army, kind of. Uh, kind of is something I would like to enjoy. Yeah, screw it, just get this old damnation in here. Let us if, it, if it becomes too much, we could always delete a couple and then replace them. Like, for example, we could delete a couple of hell cannons and replace them with a couple of trains later on. If we can ever get access to trains. I mean, these guys, uh, Jarna Grun, the servants of the Conclave, should give those to us. Anyway, let's settle everybody up and let's head on into the fray. Uh, you need sword and sorcery, and you need to go through your unique line. It's weird, the AI really dislikes getting unique lines for basically any character. Oh wow, research rate has increased by an additional 20% faction wide from Steel Tech. We really could have used that. Maybe we should have gone for a village earlier just for that. Damn. And here we're going to want for Gyran. And the Wind of Life is always great. All right, Chant, I am most likely going to replace you. So frankly, it doesn't really matter what we pick here. But I guess for now you can get Chaos Vanguard. Who knows, we might uh, get you to lead another army. Though at this point, since we can recruit a lord at level 12 or 13, it's probably better to make use of them as they are. We are the elite serves no purpose, as I saw earlier. <laughs> because we don't have the rank 7 on most units. I guess you can get scouting. Eh, you know what, just in case you can. Nah, village is going to be the one casting. You're not casting here. Scouting, Melkoths, and then we'll get other spells afterward. Looks good to me. Village, time for your day. Be you good, sir. You need to do your items? Nah, you'll be fine. A village is so difficult to kill with basically anything or anyone that uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Ah, uh, the two terror geists will be a problem, though. Definitely gonna have to watch out for those. Ah, oh, damn, I should've popped a cockatrice into this army. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't think that they had two terror geists. One, two, three, four vampire lords as well to deal with. Alright, should be a fun little debut. Gotta remember that we have mostly marauders. Go. Alrighty, Village uh, looks to be a little more speaky than at least a few of the uh, uh, lords, and hopefully he'll be pretty darn flighty as well. Well, we already know that he is. Anyway, here we go. As you guys have heard a million times at this point, I'm sure, uh, I do love playing as the vampire counts, and I do love fighting against them, so I am most definitely going to enjoy this. We're going to start the battle off by annoying the enemy a little bit with our marauder horses of a Lanish. And checking a few javelins the enemy's way as they give chase to us. And a little bit of support from the blue scribes as well. No real need to waste the blue scribes' uh, spells on the enemies until they're nice and blobbed up. We do have our reinforcements arriving on the field. I'm just going to speed it up a little bit as the main thing now is to get those hell cannons in position. We've got five of them and they're going to be a huge, huge issue for the piles of enemies. Uh, they they should probably ignore the bats and the terror guys. Then, oh, the camera dropped down into the chasm. I was like, what the heck? Uh, shouldn't be able to go down like that. Um, but anyway, time to target the enemy infantry. There's a lot of them moving in, but they are going to be very, very slow. They're going to take their time to get to us all under bombardment from all those hell cannons, and it's going to be very ugly for them. I doubt that a lot of them are going to survive to make it all the way here, especially as we can do things like damage them from a distance with the Hell Cannons, and then summon the uh, Chaos Spawn right on top of them. And this is going to help rip apart the zombies and, by the looks of it, the Grave Guard as well. And the enemy will continue to advance all under fire. Ah, oh, it's so nice to have a, chaos, a proper Chaos Artillery battery available to us, other than the Skull Cannon, of course. I've got nothing bad to say about the Skull Cannon. 
Obviously, as it's been extremely effective as well. Anyway, it looks like Village is facing off sort of against the enemy lord who has moved in and has called some bats for bat up. And, <laughs> and Village has his own aspiring champions uh, to help him out, but uh, yeah, he doesn't seem to be taking any damage here, really. The weird spawn is in the midst of the fray as well, I'm sure, or ripping a few bats apart with every swing of those claws and tentacles and other unnamed and unnameable appendages. Some kind of bug things, too. I think those are some kind of bug things. Or are they like half-grown wings, perhaps? Considering it's a Zinchin spawn, maybe that's what they're supposed to be. Well, that um, doesn't really matter. The Iron Demon, our first Iron Demon, is in here as well. And just sort of expelling steam upon the enemy as they try to move in. While we continue to hold the rest, it looks like the enemy lord, or at least the first of the enemy lords, is down. But we've got more as another vampire has moved in. That said, keep in mind that while we've been fighting these fast movers, not a single one of the enemy infantry has actually reached our battle lines. The uh, summoned unit of spawn is just doing real well here, uh, keeping several units of the enemy skeletons and zombos in place and destroying them, all the while artillery shots continue to come down, whether it be on zombies or graveguard or skeletons, everything's having a very difficult time reaching us. Once again, if only we had a few magma cannons and the Dreadquake mortar trains in here. But hey, uh, maybe by the end of the game, by the end of the campaign, it's going to take a while to rack up enough allegiance to get all of that. But we do have multiple Chaos Dwarf uh, units now, though I am tempted by the Fire Glaives as well, so we'll have to see. All right, it looks like some of the enemy are actually closing the distance now. Close enough, at least, for the uh, Iron Demon to fire upon them. You were supposed to fire on Q. There you go. A little bit of uh, blunderbuss action, or blunderbuss-like action, from those cannonades on top of the Iron Demon. Oh, looks like there's a lot of units on the field as well, as my PC is starting to lose frames periodically, so sorry about the uh, stuttering. And it looks like finally some of the enemies are making their way into melee combat, or at least close enough to it. That said, by the time they've made it in, the balance of power has shifted to about 75% in our favor, and the first two enemy stacks are pretty much destroyed. Now, Village has found himself in other enemy lord to face off against here in the middle of the fray, though he does have his marauders uh, backing him up. Now the two will face up, but I don't see the lord being of any kind of threat to village, as village is very difficult to bring down in the best of situations, and being surrounded by marauders and more importantly aspiring champions is hardly in the best of situations. And I guess we got a couple of our own sorcerers, other sorcerers, running around as well. And just like the Summon Chaos spawn, the Weird spawn is doing very well at obliterating a massive piles of zombies. We are going to get a pile of, well, maybe not a pile, but a decent number of spawn in this army as well. Maybe two more at least. Maybe four, I gotta think about it. Because we also do want to get a couple of Mutilith Vortex beasts in this army as well. As it does make sense. I don't want Forsaken in here, mostly because I don't want it to, to be a copy of Gul a Gulator's army, so it's gonna be a little bit different. We'll probably use some Halberds, a couple of Mutiliths, some pink and blue horrors, well, pink horrors and the blue horror uh, that we have. Keep the weird spawn, get a couple of the regular spawn in there. Something along those lines. I want an army that's different enough from, uh, well, all the other armies. Every army has to be different from all the other armies. Uh, that's the way we play. Anyway, uh, weird spawn's having a great time. I wonder how many kills it's racked up. A hundred. That was 99 when I uh, saw it. And the rest of the melee units that were on approach have been pretty much destroyed and the last of the reinforcements are moving in. And I'll watch a few more of those hell cannon shots hit the enemy. Here they come. Please don't hit that tower. All right, there was one. There we go. And this is what the enemy has been suffering for the entire battle as they've been trying to get to us. Those hell cannons are real nasty. And they definitely are going to deserve some names for this performance. Alright. 
Well, if they can keep firing away, so can our uh, blue whores and our blue scribes. I guess though their magics aren't really on call here. They're certainly not needed. And the battle is just about ours. In fact, uh, I think there are like five or six more units on the approach and they're all going to melt away. And before they get to us, I'm going to take a few more of those hell cannon shots. Also, great job to this unit of chaos spawn. A random summon and gets 48,000 kills and 409... or. 48,000 damage and 409 kills. Granted, most of those were zombos and skeletons, but that's still pretty darn good. Also, some great cinematic shots in this battle, if I do say so myself. I really enjoyed watching the weird spawn hold that hill against all those piles of zombies. But there we are. The battle is ours. A close victory, apparently. But I think the only reason the AI could possibly consider this a close victory was the fact that we were nearly out of ammunition on the hell cannons. Damn, 17k money for that. Very nice. Very nice indeed. As for the battle itself, this was supposed to be Village's debut, Village's show, and while he didn't do too bad, uh, 25.6k damage, in fact he did quite swell, repeatedly attacked by enemy lords and completely unharmed, uh, despite it as uh, he's extremely tanky, and our chromatic ab abominations rather, uh, did fairly well as well, 121 kills and 13k damage for a unit of blue horrors is pretty darn sweet. Uh, Weird Spawn did great as well, 17.6k, but that's all uh, beside the point. This was the show of the Hell Cannons. The Demon Engines uh, definitely brought this one home. 538, 482, 319, 341, and K, you didn't do as well, but uh, <laughs> most of the kills went to those Demon Engines and particularly effective against the slow-moving undead, the ordered ranks of Skeleton Warriors and Skeleton spears and graveguard so vulnerable to those homing and uh, splash damage shots from those hell cannons 51k damage 55k damage 34 41 and 33 solid solid work for them gotta love our demon battery uh, appreciate it and hopefully we can get a few trains to back them up in this particular army anyway we are going to uh huh I'm wondering, if we sack this, will you still occupy it? I'm gonna hope that he will sack it. And Norse Berserker, sure, campaign movement range, won't say no to that. A Forbidden Rod, very nice, though that should probably go to Slanish. Uh, well, then again, I guess no rod is forbidden to Slanish. A Skull of Katam can potentially be useful, especially if we're doing something like that good old-fashioned... Uh, uh, good old-fashioned blue fire spam. And we killed in battle, and we are good. Alright, now you two. You cannot move. I would like Mr. Astrogruel to occupy this. And yeah, I know it'll... Uh, whatever. Uh, just take it. Unfortunately, Astrogoth's faction has been and will probably continue to be completely useless since they lack a tower. I wish I had known that they were broken in this way before I decided to uh, take Uzkalek. Ah, that uh, cultist camp of iron, that, uh, yeah, it was just too tempting. Really should have left him, them, you know, the tower there instead of bothering with that one. We could have just kept the pastures. And it's not like we really need that much more armor on our giant piles of chaos warriors and extremely heavily armored, as they already are, but it's okay. Uh, not a big deal, that's what the other chaos dwarfs are for. We'll sacrifice Astrogoth on the altar of, uh, wanting more stuff from everybody else. Uh, you two can both go into raiding stance. There's not much healing to do since you went there. And you fa did fairly well. We will have to get to Falls of Doom with you, I think. Because Archeon will have to fight these guys, then take Vale of Woe, then move back to take Jarna Grund as... Yeah, we'll need to confederate them in some way, shape, and form. Valmir. I, what, was it this turn or last? Damn it, I always forget. 54, yes, we can now get the 
Blood Shrine of Corn. Okay, we'll have two Blood Shrines and two uh, and two Skull Cannons. That's a motorcycling to do for Kukar's army. I want this army to move quick and damn well. Will it move quick? I'm almost tempted to build a few more Skull Cannons. We can still build some from the Bloody Sword. But for now, it's okay. I've been appreciating their effectiveness in that particular army, so... Yeah, they will continue to be effective as such. Anyway, we are good with the Gift of Chaos in this particular turn on this... No, wait, do we want to switch this bounty to something else? Uh, we could get... Yeah, we should probably keep switching until we have access to Bloodthirsters and Soul Grinders. Valkyrie is going to want those and probably some Chaos War Shrines as well. I guess we'll go back to Hellforged Fury for this turn. Just gotta remember to get Death Bounty back up and running next time. Uh, Hellforged Fury for you. Alright. It is a little bit of a hassle to switch these every single turn, but what can you do? Uh, next up, ooh, we're down to two turns for these. We're going to go with Charioteer. A bit of an odd choice, I imagine, at least it seems, but I want the Gorby's Chariots of Corn, and I want the Marauder Chariots of Slanesh up and running. We've been waiting for both of those in two armies, so I think we'll prioritize this, then we'll go to Virulent Blessings for the additional growth that is offered by the Nurgle stuff, though I am tempted by Giant Manacles by virtue of the 25% uh, missile resistance for giants and chaos trolls are both already very strong units but well uh, they can clearly uh, and be stronger and use a little bit of that missile resist anyway let's double check diplo before we go and then we go to next turn what do we have here uh shadow legion and verms want to trade exiles of nehek rank three okay yeah they're rank three and vlad is rank two uh Probably not going to trade with Verms. Either they serve or they die. You... Oh, you know what I wanted to do? Yes. Let's peace out with the Ice Court. Temporarily. Just temporarily. We'll still destroy them. Not to worry. Oh, wow. Lamy and Sister, just out of curiosity, how much are you willing to offer us to peace out? 4k? Okay. Uh, and you won't become our vassal like this? Well, that's gonna be your problem. It very much is. Uh, the Ice Court, for now. Go and damage Throg a little bit more. And then we'll get back to you. You won't realize that you're playing right into the hands of the Dark Gods. Well, let's see about those buildings, shall we? We got money to spend, a decent amount of it. Oh, just a little bit short of nice, but not bad, let's say. Uh, riding Fortress here, okay. I don't want to waste money on the uh, uh, on these things because they will all be deleted eventually. Especially once we get that Nurgle buff, as we won't need the growth nearly as much anymore. Maybe a few more salt mines would also uh, be appreciated. But for now, this is looking pretty okay. Huh. Maybe I did it all this turn, and... I can't remember which turn we're in. Alright, well, that's fine. Uh, skip, skip out the glory buildings, outposts, commandments, not skip. Uh, we're actually going to trade away probably all of this. I don't... F I frankly don't particularly care for the gold mine. Hmm. Though there is an argument to be made for building it. You know what? Go for the exploit vassals for now. We might build the gold mine and repair this just so that if we trade it, maybe to Nagarond if we keep them around, but maybe not if we destroy them, depending on what you guys think. I mean, and by destroy them, I mean, we're going to destroy them anyway, just leave them with one settlement, so the question will be whether we leave them here. Now, the good thing about the Dark Elves is that they're rich. They are way, way better money makers as vassal tributes, as the, uh, as compared to the Norskins, who are garbage, absolute garbage. And this is the big reason why Valkia was getting, like, 50,000 vassal tribute, and we have a paltry 18k, because Valkia's vassals were mostly Dark Elves, or at least had big Dark Elves elven empires all the dark elves i think if i'm recalling correctly and they were making tons of cash norskin is not so much i mean even the port territories with the tier three strategy chamber barely making any money and they're also building really slow because they're making very little money but anyway uh outpost available skip commit another commandment available well we're already building stuff here game i guess we'll just go for foster cults for now oh wait actually no i lied here we'll want to do actually exploit vassals for the bonus campaign movement range now we can end the turn
All right, this, with the end of this turn, however, our extra healing and our extra campaign, our bonus control will end as well, unless we do the battle for the Demon Blade with, uh, uh, with Mr. Azazel, which is certainly a possibility, but I'd probably save that for next episode. Do I like to have one, at least one big, big battle every episode? Non-aggression pack, Bellicorn, no, but you know what's coming, good sir, don't you? Oh! I just saw the Vanaheimlings lose the territory to Ivress, and the fact that Ivress has taken them out means Nikari is probably dead. And usually they either fight with they fight with Nikari to their death, or yeah, since they've taken the Isle of Wights, they probably killed Nikari. Well, that's a little bit of a shame. Marathi is going to have to uh, suffice Slanesh wise. Huh. Oh well. I guess we do have Siggy and we... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody gets Path to Glory. Thank you. I guess we do have Siggy and we do have Azazel, so there is that. Speaking of Siggy and Azazel, you are going to rack to Gorge right now. And you, Demohar, will head to Eldar Spire in a little bit. And... Ooh, Execution. Yeah, but this is still not worth fighting. Executioners or no, that's just not worth fighting. Out of resolve. A little bit of damage, though. A uh, thousand gold, is that worth moving back? I, you know what, I don't know whether we were at max range. I always forget to check. So I guess we won't. Alright, now you're going to need to heal up, or either that or I'm going to need to actually fight some of these battles at some point. Though at least you two are near each other. You can meet up at the Temple of Cain, and then spread out to Hag Grief and Kragoroth, whatever. Assuming that we ignore Nagaron, and we could probably ignore it until the... Uh, until the end there. Anyway, uh, so you can move down here. And let's see. Archie, are you in range of Gorthy? Ooh, you are indeed in range of Gorthy. Though I guess the problem will be that we'll still need to move to take the tale of Veil of Woe and still need to move all the way up here, both of which are rather far. Uh, chant. And of curiosity. Oh, and this is all freaking attrition territory. But in order to get here, it's going to take like three turns. Nonetheless, you're going to have to go. I see no choice in the matter. I have to attack these guys as well, but that's not the priority right now. You two both go right here and just hope that there's nobody nearby with a lightning strike. And uh, you, unless you are willing to be our vassal right now, we're about to have a big battle. Huh, it actually decreased a little bit, the chances. We could try threatening them, but it'll kill our reliability, so it's probably not worth our time, is it? All right, fine, quick deal, and... Wait, are you at war with anybody? Wait. Might not actually want to draw everybody into a war with these guys. They're not at war with anybody. We have to declare war directly, yes. All right, and ooh, I should have moved Darkeon first. Oh, I made a mistake. I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> oh, I got so excited about the fight. That, uh, wait, wait. Ah, I was hoping that they'd immediately peace out. Alright, fine. What's the likelihood that they ignore us here and then go for Eagle Ares, huh? Hmm. Alright, Arcan, I guess you are going to take Veil of Woe. Which has something in the way of defenders. We're gonna auto-resolve and hopefully this will damage our army sufficiently for them to be like, Hey, we want to kill you now. Sack this, free potion of toughness. And, ah, I should have disabled the, uh, or disabled this thing. Yeah, that was my bad. I got so excited about the fight that I stopped thinking about the zone of control. Go here now. And occupy the Vale of Woe. There you go. Uh, who is up next? Gulator. Is Mr. Azag nearby? I want to take my annoyance at myself out on him. Uh, well, he has taken Middenheim, so maybe we start with that. He moving out this way. Yeah, gotta find him until we can get a battle going. Kolek, you've got places to be. You've also got a few things to get, like another Shagoth. Though I guess right now it's not the most critical thing in the world. Yeah, go to Plains of Zanbai Jin. Kuhar. I believe Katha is broken in that... Okay, we also need to get to Wiley Village before Scamp, your little Scamp, gets there. <laughs> oh, these ogres. Useless, completely useless for the entire game. Suddenly, oh, they wanna, they wanna actually conquer stuff. I mean, I guess they're only now, they only now just became our allies. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I can still complain about them. I can and I will, and I have, and I will again. Uh, you Jaeger, 
You need to keep an eye on this, but ha, huh, it looks like uh, the Agol have arrived here as well. Well, good, the Nor if the Norskins can keep these guys busy, and if the Norskins would please listen and take Black Creek's bar. <laughs> Why is the AI so bad at listening to your orders? It's a fr it's free real estate. We're literally telling you to occupy something for free. And they're just like, no, no. We'd literally rather be poor than listen to you. Which, frankly, I can I can respect that, but it is annoying. Uh, Vashnar Helnox, you were supposed to join, I believe, is Zazel's army. So you're gonna move down here. Demahar, we're gonna need to summon troops. Uh, okay, we're trying to get a battle going, but damn. All right, you two are supposed to join Jaeger's army. So you go to Jaeger, Talzin Rune Smasher, Rune Smasher, you go to Jaeger as well. And I believe we have a new one ready as well. A new hero, yes. You. Valmy. Oh, they're both Rune Smasher. Ah, the Rune Smasher brothers, Talzin and Valmir. I kind of like that. Hmm. When, I, when, when things like that happen, I immediately want to think of a story for them. But anyway. Uh, ooh. Yes, upgrade this. And while we're at it, did we upgrade you to level 2? Yes, we did. Did we upgrade Scarbrands to level 2? It's still being built, okay. Uh, just the ones that are super needed. Did we upgrade... I oh, didn't, I never even built yours, did I? Oh, it's because you don't, your Dread Rock is at the low level, meaning we can't really recruit anything. But I guess we still need to build it. Uh, we're making decent amounts of cash right now, so Dread Rock it is. Oh man, I forgot how many territories I gave you, damn. Uh, yeah. Just Plague Bearers and Nurglings. You better step it up, Mr. Kugath. All of this was given to you. You should be, uh, you should be rolling in money. I would, frankly, I would prefer you rolling in money than whatever else you're rolling in down there, Nurglite, as you are, Malefax. You get a new exalted hero of Nurgle, and then I guess you are going to Katha, more or less. Let's just start on your way down there. All right, how about oh, the million heroes we need to move? D oh, you're not a hero. I lied. You need to do several things. First of all, you need to get marauders and marauder horses. This is all for Valkia. Though I guess for now, we'll get you trolls. We'll delete them later, but they will be helpful in taking these territories as you're actually going to have to fight for them. Uh, then we'll move you to Ironfrost, where we will recruit some Chaos Warriors, which are still there. Good. All right, three Chaos Warriors, two Marauders, and two Marauders, and yeah. And then we'll corn these guys up. I don't know how many we're going to keep, and oh, damn. I didn't realize our uh, money had dropped so significantly. Uh, this is all going to Valkia. Marauders of Corn, dual axes. Marauders of Corn, dual axes. No shields, no pathetic shields. Don't shield yourselves. Dual axes for you. I mean, I guess the shields would have been useful, but too late. All right, very nice. Then I would like you to go into Raiding Stance and head down to here. We need you to take Eldar Spire and Dracula Spire at the same time. That's all this is happening. All right, and we might be able to recruit some more stuff here, but it doesn't have to be a priority until we actually attack. Master of Seals. Get us some more seals, would you? No clubbing them. Success, thank you. And you can get Steel Tech. If we can maintain it at two turns, that would be fantastic, because we'd be able to fully tech up really quickly at this rate. And just gotta keep it where it is. You, sir, are going to join Chant. Oh, damn, I was gonna replace Chant with a higher level Lord. We have this for two more turns. Huh. Funnily enough, we could summon another Lord at Vale of... Well, I guess we could just do it at Falls of Doom, if I don't forget. <laughs> oh, man. It's very possible that I will. Vashnar Torturus, you are a new Zinchin hero that is going to be joining this army as a Zinchin mage. And like I said, I want the sort of best type of units from every uh, god in a single army. Not the undivided army, which is chance army, but the... a different kind of undivided army, let's say. All the gods together, the cooperation army versus the different kind of cooperation... I, it's, <laughs> it's kind of hard to differentiate them. All right. But you know what I mean, and that's what counts. Anyway, Hexus the Uncoordinated. I would like you to come down here, although I did want to potentially try to summon a new Sorcerer of Metal, like you, Infernal Dominus, at level 11, and see what we get in terms of Path to Glory. Penumbral Pendulum and Blissful Rapture. And Unbreakable, which is all fine. 
as opposed to what do you have? You have also Penumbral Pendulum, so that's equal, but you have Eldritch Aura, which is quite nice for uh, the Corn forces, because they don't like being hit by spells, and they don't like being hit um, by missiles. And they get Fires of Change, which, okay, they wouldn't appreciate, because it's Zinchi, but at the same time, it's damage resistance for everybody when you're casting. And obviously, we're only going to get non-damaging spells in the Corn army, because, yeah. And we can put you on a Manticore to fight. To be a fighty mage, because if you're going to follow a corn army, you're going to be a blood priest or a blood father, whatever they're called. You know the corn mages? You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, Hudika Himenphone. Who the heck are you? Oh, you're another, you're another Slanashi mage. All right, head down there. Let's do buildings and let's go to next turn. If we have time for another quick battle, then we'll fight it. Although we're rapidly running out of time and I fear there's not enough to fight. Uh, uh, there's not enough to fight the servants of the conclave. I don't know if they attack us. Maybe. Do I have the patience to wait for another episode to fight a big old fight? I don't know that I do. I'm just trying to go through these quickly, keep these all upgraded. Ooh, we're losing public order in a lot of them now. That demon blade would fix this, but we can let it uh, deplete for a few turns before we uh, uh, before we counteract it. Alright, we can deal with the rest later. Let's reselect our tech to charioteer. Then we gotta do the gifties. Uh, Hail of Hellfire. You will change to the Crown of Kings for Archie. Feathered Abominations. You're fine. Um, but... Hmm... Ooh, we got the mystic... Uh, yes, yes. Mystic muta Mystical mutations, moodle of vortex beasts. We want those for village. And that'll actually unlock Chaos Shrines of Zinch. And we are well underway to unlocking Lords of Change and stuff. Yes, please. Activate gift. Then Hellforged Fury is going to get replaced by Death's Bounty to get that additional post-battle loot. And I believe those are the only ones we have to do. We can't swap out the Endless March because we have to keep it on permanently. And the same thing goes for the Nurgle one, unfortunately. Need replenishment and we need movement. Please, please don't go for Eagle Ares, Ares, whatever. I'd be really annoyed if you did. Because we'd have to chase them down, grab those things, and... Alright, anyway. Uh, skip, 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 skip. End turn. Alright, cross your appendages, folks. Let's hope that those guys attack rather than run. And they move? Or did they not move? I saw the Legion of Asgore move, but I don't know about the rest. Peace Treaty. How about no? How about you take Chill Road? No. I mean, yeah, okay, he's not gonna become our vassal at this state at this rate. Hmm. I'm just gonna hope that the servants of the Conclave are towards the end like the sentinels around the Black Pyramid of Nagash. But if they've already moved, I fear they have. Ah, they have. Damn. How dare you cowards. And ow! Oh, Gorth the Cruel has moved to Falls of Doom. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that at all. Fortunately, we can't reach him. Actually, we can reach him here, so Village will instead fight him while Archaeon takes Jarna Grund. Huh. Okay, that actually worked out better than I thought it would. Well, I, I would have preferred to have Arcan fight three stacks instead of only two, plus the, uh, including the tier five garrison here. Uh, but we'll fight whatever. And a hey, Valkia's on the field now. Beautiful. Oh, I guess if Valkia's on the field already, we can just have her take this stuff, rather than having Demahar do it. All right, fine. We'll do that. That means we'll get her to debut next time. But for now, let's, since this is Village and the Hell Cannons show, uh, let's see about comparing a little bit of uh, Chaos Dwarf Tech versus other Chaos Dwarf Tech. Village, move in. Chant follow with those Hell Cannons. I'm going to have to march stance, but... Huh. Does Vigor even affect Hell Cannons? Ooh, they've got a couple Hell Cannons of their own. I like it. I like it very much. All right, Chanty. Do you need to recruit? Now you're fine. You're fine. Moving to March Stance. Go right here. Actually should have checked whether these guys are willing to peace out right now, but you know what? Probably don't want to waste the battles anyway. Yeah, they're not willing to peace out, and therefore they will die instead. Uh, wait, you're not able to join these guys yet, are you? No, you're not. Okay, that's fine. That's just fine. Village, we're going to level you, and then we're going to go, go, go. 
What do we want on you? I'm thinking... Hmm. Mine all mine. This gives us souls. Diplomatic relations. A pretty big increase. Request army cost reduction. And this gives us changing of the ways, which does nothing for us. Casualty replenishment rate and upkeep reduction for spawn. But the Paragon of Change passive a bit. Yeah, it's the Paragon of Change we want. It's the best point that village gets, so that's what he's gonna get. And now, the blue scribes. Well, we did the Wind of Life. Next, we will probably want to go the Wind of Beasts, or the Lore of Beasts. Those are the two best ones here. Metal's pretty good, too. Uh, fire's okay. He already has Zinch. I guess we're gonna go Metal. Could do Funnel Magic as well, but nah, I, I kind of want more of these just to uh, keep gambling. It's it's fun. The Blue, the blue Scribes are a fun character to use. Uh, characters, I guess. Uh, yeah, Shaman, please. Shaman, I will. I hear Gelt. Wind of Shaman, I will. Anyway, you. Get another point in Chaos Vanguard, you. Get another point in It Doesn't Matter, because you're not going to be the one casting, but Smoke and Mirrors. And I would actually like you to max out Melkoth's, because it'll give you the ability to overcast it and thus range further, and thus maybe catch something while it's still needed to be caught. You cannot switch stances, you cannot switch stances, therefore, away we go. Damn. That's a good-looking stag. that's a lot of fire glaives. I'm so jealous, don't worry, we'll get some of them into a few of our armies. Go. Yeah, we're getting some great, uh, great cinematic shots of these battles. You got to love fighting in the uh, Chaos Dwarf territories. They're always looking uh, real swell. The Chaos Dwarf territories, well, the Darklands in general, and the uh, Chaos Wastes always make for some great lighting and awesome shots on these maps. Very atmospheric. Um, but anyway, aside from that, once again, we return for a little more Hell Cannon supremacy this episode. We've had one one Hell Cannon Supremacy, yes, but what about second Hell Cannon Supremacy? So here we go again, we're gonna pop him into position and begin the bombardment of the enemy settlement. Now it is going to take a while and we've seen plenty of that bombardment in the last battle, so I'm probably going to speed through a decent amount of it. Let's watch a few shots connect and then we'll speed through it until the rest of our units are ready to uh, get into battle. Thing is, uh, we will be able to see the yeah. Oh, this is a unit of fire glaives out here. That's a unit of fire glaives. Uh, shouldn't have positioned a high value unit all the way out here, and uh, I got distracted by this, and now I forgot what I was saying. Oh, the Hell Cannons will continue firing even while the rest of our troops continue fighting as well. But anyway, uh, Chaos Dwarfs getting a little bit of a taste of their own medicine from artillery bombardment. Uh, being a little bit superior to theirs. Granted, they do have two Hell Cannons of their own, uh, but we'll have to uh, we'll have to knock them out with our Hell Cannons. And I think the Soul of Damnation has greater range than the regular Hell Cannons do, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, 499 range versus 446. Eh. Not much more range, but enough to outshoot an enemy Hell Cannon, I would think. Alright, maybe one more nice hit from a uh, cannon. Ooh, into a uh, bull render. Ah, oh, that one a little bit missed. Uh, come on. Knock at least a couple of them down. It's frankly probably a waste of shots to uh, hit the bull renders uh, rather than the Chaos Dwarf Warriors. But that's okay. I'm happy as long as the Hell Cannons are happy. You gotta keep feeding them blood and souls, or else they, uh, or else they get hangry. And you wouldn't want to see your Hell Cannon hangry. Anyway, let's speed uh, this up. Uh, Hell Cannon Supremacy and Demon Engine Supremacy aside, we will uh, want to get our infantry and village into the main fight. We can see the HP dropping on plenty of enemy units, and oh wow, those Kadai Fireborn were heavily damaged due to the magical damage on the cannons. Anyway, Village moves in with his pet weird spawn as well, which loves to spin to win, apparently. 
Hopefully the weird spawn doesn't suffer the same kind of issue that the uh, spawn of corn suffered, which they were also single entities similar to this thing. And, but at the same time, as you guys may recall in the early portion of the campaign, kept uh, kept trying to get itself killed via every otter as well. So we shall see. Anyway, village fighting sort of back to something of the Chaos Spawn here as he gets surrounded by a Bale Taurus and some Chaos Dwarf Warriors and Bull Centaur Renders, but the rest of our units are getting ready to move in as well. We've also summoned a unit of Chaos Spawn here, facing off against some Bull Renders as well, but probably going to allow us to land a few extra shots and with that we're up. And with our hell cannons. Granted, once again, not super useful against the uh, bull centaur renders in particular, but a few shots into those uh, orc laborers should probably clear the uh, clear the blob. Let's. Uh all right, how's Village doing? Oh, he has lost a little bit of HP. That bull, uh, that uh, not the bull render, but the Bale Taurus appears to be doing damage. Hmm. Gonna have to cast a few spells to make sure that uh, uh, to make sure that Village gets his barrier up and running. Why am I not concerned about losing his HP and uh, current rate? Simple. Uh, the weird spawn has its own regeneration effect. A, it has regeneration by itself, and B, it has the rotten regeneration ability that you can pop in an emergency. The village, while is losing HP and doesn't currently have a regeneration ability, does have the blue scribes which have access to the wind of life and thus have access to both earth blood and regrowth. Granted, we have to, you know, roll the dice and uh, uh, random our way into that, but we have plenty of monitor to work with and thus will eventually get ourselves regrowth and earth blood so not super worried especially as we don't have a lot of lures on the blue scribes right now so we're much more likely to draw the particular spells that we need uh, there is an argument to be made for keeping a uh, a few of the other spells out. Anyway, speaking of good spells, we drop an Infernal Gateway down upon the enemy. It's not going to do anything crazy to the uh, uh, Bull Centaurs, but it will deplete their HP a little bit, and it'll certainly clear piles of Orc Laborers. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, we do have some Infernal Guard here facing off together with the uh, Bull Renders against our Marauders, and you would think just the sheer disparity in unit quality, like a a pile of marauders versus a pile of infernal guard plus bull renders is a pretty crazy disparity in favor of the enemy. That said, what we do have in our favor is once again the blue scribes popping that final transmutation upon the enemy and reducing their melee defense and can continue popping various debuffs on the enemy, like the Curse of Anra here and what have you. All right, and there's the Curse of Anra here, and the enemy loses basically all its mech. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to see the debuffs here. Uh, Final Transmutation is still up. Curse of Anor here takes all their melee attack. Their armor is reduced by Sundered Armor and by the Curse and by Warp Flame all at the same time. Uh, heavily, like, for example, the Infernal Guard are down to only 45 armor. Less armor than Marauders, who are barely wearing any army at all, armor at all. And the Blue Scribes continue adding their spellwork nonsense and to the fray as well, popping the Vissens Wild Form on our Marauders, buffing their armor up to 104 a while the poor Infernal Guard oh, we're down to 40 whatever which is pretty great you gotta love having access to all the lures in the world with a uh, with a single character or character well actually you know what I mean <laughs> there are two of them damn that's gonna get me repeatedly and A hey, we get the final hit with the weird spawn on uh, that Bale Taurus and now the weird spawn continues forward to try to go after this Kadai Fireborn or these could die fireborn. I'm sure they will dish out a decent amount of damage, but they are taking hits from the uh, aspiring champions and from our sorcerers and from our hell cannons at the same time. That's just not a place they want to be. Plus, these are Marauders of Zinch, so they have magical damage, and while the glass cannon and damage dealers of the Fireborn should certainly be able to rip their way through Marauders, this is perhaps not the best uh, situation for them to be in. So, getting some great shots in here. The uh, the sacrifice ability on the Marauders being activated always makes uh, the... Uh, 
Uh, always makes the effect look pretty nice as well. Yeah, definitely some great cinematic shots over this entire episode. Alright, though it looks like we won't get too many more of these particular Kadai Fireborn as they are starting to run out of steam, dropping down to less than half of their troop number and about 20%, maybe 15% of their HP. Sorcerers fighting in the front line, you gotta love having mages uh, that can fight. Orcs, Chaos, uh, gotta appreciate their mage work. Don't have to keep them away from the fray. Just trying to get some good shots of the uh, of the mage doing his work. How are we doing otherwise? The hell cannons have started to run low on ammunition, but as we can see, the hell cannons have been pretty devastating to the enemy uh, to the enemy army over time. I also see that a unit of infernal guard moves in, so we're actually going to back off the village and his entire army. And the reason that we're going to back off from this up this hill is this. Here we go. Four hits from the Hell Cannons all at once, dropping the Infernal Guard below half HP. And another volley should make sure that this unit is pretty much done for. And the Blue Scribe's doing a little bit of support as well. There we go, and the Infernal Guard are done for. Man, look at this just pile of corpses at this uh, entrance to the, uh, to the enemy settlement. That's a pretty glorious battle. You know what, when uh, going into this, I wasn't as glad I was wanting Archeon to fight all the enemies at the same time, but you know what? I think this was definitely worth it. I, uh, that was what I was going to say. Durthu Gorth of the Cruel uh, certainly showed up and is mounting a heck of a defense of his settlement, as we still haven't really made our way into the settlement. And definitely giving us a fight. Anyway, the Hell Cannons continue to annoy. A new unit of Infernal Guard moves in and takes a few more hits from those Hell Cannons. And will continue losing tons and tons of units. The enemy not able to really leverage the fact that it has much more elite infantry than we do. Back into the fray for us, though it looks like we're going to have to. Let's speed this up a little bit. As we find a few more enemies. Oh wow, those are some brave goblin laborers. Though I suppose they think they're only charging marauders. And a little blue horrors. Got a little bit of melee on them as well. Since they by and large do uh, range damage. Or at least by and large they have been doing range damage in this particular battle. Oh, look at them, look at them go. Not as cute as nerglings perhaps, but uh, adorable enough for our purposes. And of course, we still have to make decent uh, demon armies, or at least armies that are mo more focused on getting demon units than uh, mortal units. It's definitely on the menu, and I want those for every single god, possibly uh, several varieties, depending on how those armies are formulated. For example, the flying army will be primarily Zinchen. Maybe a few manticores in there, because they're pretty good. And we have to save uh, gift slots for other uh, units, but that probably won't be the only other Zinchen army. Because we still have our Flamer army and then Village's army as well. Of course, the Flying army can have piles of Doom Knights in addition to Lords of Change and Screamers and Cockatrices and whatever else we can get. There's a decent amount of Flyers in the Zinchen roster. A solid amount of Flyers, I should say, in the Zinchen roster. Though I feel like Furies for the Forces of Chaos shouldn't be a gift unit. Like, you should be able to get as many Furies as you want. They're not a strong enough unit to warrant uh, uh, to warrant needing gifts in particular for them. But, uh, well, whatever. Anyway, some more Chaos Warriors make their way into the frame. We are still fighting around this particular beachhead into the enemy settlement, but the enemy will run out of units eventually. It's only a matter of time, and we're certainly winning uh, the attrition game. Village is particularly good at that sort of thing, especially with the supporting healing from the Blue Scribes. 
and the supporting fire from those hell cannons. Oh, we should definitely uh, have the advantage, and we definitely do, as the balance of power has shifted to about 65, maybe 7, closing in on 70% in our favor. Other units tried to move in like these Chaos Dwarf blunderbusses only to get focused down um, by the uh, uh, by the hell cannons yet again. At this point, we can peel away a few additional units and send them in to fight in other portions of the enemy settlement. Here are some Marauder horses of Zinch, as well as a couple of regular regular marauder horses and a few of the regular marauders from the other army trying to enter the fray while villages force or hit the blob that he is leading he is going to make their way into the settlement from this side hit them from both sides until we can get Gort the cruel to engage and hopefully then destroy him otherwise he's just been hanging around i think he cast a couple of spells i think i saw a burning head at some point and did he cast cascading fire cloak on you yeah he's just adding fire support he's not even really firing his pistol at us which is a little bit disappointing but i'm sure he'll get into combat eventually so you know, that'll be just fine all right more marauders versus uh, enemy goblin laborers out here and damn this battle is long this is the longest battle in the campaign so far but it's been a pretty good one so i'm happy with it All right, nice little contest between the uh, weaker units. We've seen Infernal Guard and uh, Bull Renders facing off against us, and now we are facing off against Marauders of Zinch and Aspiring Champions, and here we just see some Goblin Laborers lose to regular Marauders. But I guess the Goblin Laborers would lose to pretty much anything? Hmm. Huh. Actually, I'd like to see Goblin Laborers versus Skaven Slaves. Kind of an interesting contest, if nothing else. Anyway, the weak versus the weakest versus of the weakest. Anyway, I throw a peasant mob in there too. And hey, we got some orc laborers moving in. They have access to very cheap armor piercing with those big old maces that they have. This is great axe infantry, but I'm reasonably okay. This guy actually has an axe. I'm reasonably sure what the most of these guys are carrying ain't axes. Oh well, whatever. We can kill him uh, that much harder if we activate uh, if we activate sacrifice. And if you're wondering why I decided to activate sacrifice, it is this: an enemy unit of fire glaives stand against us, looking pretty cool under the effect of Melkot's mystifying miasma and spirit leech at the same time. And we did need to do as much damage to them as possible because, well, fire glaives are quite good in melee. 58, 58 melee attack and defense, plenty of weapon strength and armor piercing weapon strength and anti-large. Add to that, and the fact that we moved in a pile of uh, marauder horsemen, granted uh, led by a couple of sorcerers, but still a pile of marauder horsemen, means that uh, the enemy should have no trouble bringing plenty of them down. We'll have to be real careful here. And possibly back off as we do get reinforcements moving in. The marauders have, or marauders, the goblin laborers have been taken care of, and we've got a pile of uh, marauders uh, being led by a unit of aspiring champions moving in to help. Over on this side, villages closing in on Gorth the Cruel broke their way through an orc laborer unit and will be trying to make their way into the main portion of the anime settlement battle by the looks of it is nearly ours the blue scribes are moving in i believe to cast another spell another regrowth on mr chant here who has taken some damage we also have our summoned unit of forsaken on the field who we're going to send to deal and take damage from the uh, from the fire glaives as the rest of us already took plenty of damage from them There we go. Once again, getting great shots in this particular battle of uh, just units fighting each other. Of the spectacle, the pure spectacle of this game is just the best. I always get so much joy from watching the uh, uh, from watching the various battles. Alrighty, back to AR Chaos Sorcerers, but now Chant is at full HP, got, having gotten a regrowth and I believe an Earth Blood as well, and we can head them both uh, back into the fray against those Fire Glaives. 
and gotta be a little bit careful as there's another fire glaive unit back there but it looks like the enemy army is in bad shape these fire glaives will flee before the forsaken and the marauders and behind them while the marauder horsemen i believe have peeled away and found yet another unit of fire glaives though the blue scribes have moved in to uh, charge them in the back and then force them to shatter as well and are you kidding me is this another unit of fire glaives kids it's all fire glaives everywhere and ooh, they're actually gonna get a few shots up ooh, i like the exchange of fire come on another volley one more volley yeah there you go oh i want these units on the field for us i love listening to their pew pew laser sounds it gives me much joy what does not give them a joy is this infernal gateway looking down upon them even as it sucks them in and uh, destroys them. Uh, looks like the unit will get ripped apart by this broken army losses and the vortex can't be, uh, can't be great. There we go. Though it does look like a decent amount of them survived, the damage was certainly sufficient. And with that, with the death of that particular unit, I do believe the battle is ours. Gorth the Cruel is the only unit that has not broken, and it's doing that thing where you need to approach a unit in order for the unit to finally break. Um, but it looks like it doesn't count units on the ground, so we needed to get the Blue Scribes just close enough to force uh, Gorth off the field, because clearly he didn't care about the little blue horrors spitting fire at him anyway heroic victory for us and just a fantastic fight hmm one of the best fights of the campaign most definitely Ooh, I gotta say, I was not expecting that particular battle to take nearly as long as it did, but take long it did. Though perhaps should have. I mean, the enemy had basically what is a rank 7, a high veterancy let's say tier 4 stack they had their infernal guard piles of fire glaives fireborn hell cannons a decent amount of various bull renders between the garrison and the main army as well gorthy uh, supporting yeah there's a very solid stack probably in fact about as elite a stack as you can expect to encounter from the chaos dwarfs and built by the ai so uh, it does make sense that it did took a take a while to clear them then really the only things they were missing were Dreadquakes and uh, trains, Kadai destroyers, and uh, infernal iron sworn rather than guard to uh, elite it out to the max. But yeah, very nice. And considering what we're working with here, primarily marauders and such, I'm pretty darn happy with the result. The village got 38k damage. The blue scribes definitely came in very handy here. They were able to heal up all three of our lords between Earthblood and Regrowth from the uh, uh, from the lure of life and periodically drop damaging spells and debuff spells as well. Uh, really obnoxiously strong caster lord, or hero rather, and a uh, heroes and i'm glad that we have them I'm very glad indeed of course this episode remains the demon engine episode and we got nearly eighty thousand damage on the soul of damnation uh 49k on this one hell cannon no slouch 45 31 and 33 all very nice indeed and 24k damage on the weird spawn which uh, once again did quite swell as well very nice i Yes, we... Oh, wait, I can't remember. I think we were just at range, meaning if we occupy it, we... I guess we'll sack it and then... No, no, we have to occupy it. We have no choice. Because Arcan will attack this... Yeah, fine, whatever. We'll skip the money. Village, you can maybe keep that potion or maybe I'll give it to somebody else who needs it more i will think about it what i won't think about is ending this episode because this has gone super long far far longer than i was expecting it to because of the length of that battle so next time arcan attacks jarna grund and we uh, we force vassalize them and get access to tier 5 uh, building as well as whatever other battles we get up to plenty to do around nagaron town plenty to do in uh, the uh, northernmost portions of the empire as we attack uh, the uh, forces of azag the slaughter 
Wanderer and continue our conquest of the Darklands or complete our conquest of the Darklands in order to head into the northern World's Edge Mountains and cross into the uh, Empire of Undeath as well. Stay tuned for more Arcane. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially the threshold if you've been enjoying all glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.